This is a massive dwarf. My name is Brent and today we're going to play another game of can I try not to knock this model off my table while I deliver a video. Also it is currently 3 a.m. in the a.m. which means I'm making a large noise and my family probably going to hate me for this but unfortunately due to my computer deciding to Thanos snap the utilities for my camera and me not being able to record all day I'm having to record this video at this time of the evening and so I apologize to my family for the unfortunate events that have happened to unfold but let's not dilly on the fact that I have a couple of issues with my computer and my camera and all the rest of the things that I have to have issues with and let's just get straight into the video also before we get into the video make sure to leave a like perhaps comment in the bottom just in the little space that YouTube allows you to leave some words in just leave some words because this helps me to grow my channel and helps me to take over the entirety of YouTube also words may not make sense in this video it is 3 a.m. in the a.m. by the way please click subscribe because if you do I will then have one more new subscriber this was one of the first models that has been sent to me and not actually printed by me and the first thing I needed to do was fill in a couple of spots that were damaged either during the shipping or perhaps during the support removal I'm not 100% sure I use green stuff this is an epoxy based substance which you pretty much need to stick together and rub about and turn it into some green stuff starts out with yellow and blue stuff and magically makes green stuff what you do with this stuff is you sculpt the part that you need to sculpt I made sure that I had got the basic shape right of the little hair piece that had snapped off and then I came back in with some softer and harder tools and I kind of sculpted back in some of the hairlines that were on the hair this is a fairly easy thing to do especially for this specific section luckily it's not too complicated if you just take your time make sure to use a wet tool especially when you're trying to carve back into it this will definitely help the tools glide through the stuff and not stick to it I use green stuff because it's a lot stickier and sticks easier to the model I then I'm gonna paint the skin tones I've done multiple videos on how to paint skin tones I've done this for many different models and it's pretty much the same process every single time I start out with reddish flesh as my base I usually need to do about three maybe four layers to make sure that I get a good solid base coat once I've done that, I'll start to work my way up through the lighter colors. This starts off with base flesh. This I will spray quite liberally over the top of the reddish flesh. I still want to leave some of that flesh tone underneath. This is going to create the depth. I then take natural flesh and I start to highlight. This time, I'm going to start being a bit more specific about the areas that I'm going to highlight. I take medium flesh after that and this is quite a bright color but it is super desaturated compared to what it looks like in the bottle. I use a mixture of that and fairy flesh and I start to build the highest highlights on the skin. At this point it's super desaturated. Skin tones always seem to look like they are super laughless and dead. So to bring that laugh back I add my favorite glaze in the entire world which is grimoire purple thinned down to absolutely nothing. I also use demonic yellow as just a slight tint over the top of the skin in order to base coat the hair i'm going to use red leather this is one of my favorite paints hands down if i'm doing anything orange or even kind of orangey brown this is going to be my base because the coverage on this is really really great the paint moves well and it does a pretty good job of covering even over black for being such a light color I start out with a heavy hand and a large brush and then I start to go back into the edges and I tidy up those edges and make them super tidy. One of the great things about this paint is how well it matches when you add layer over layer and you start to come closer to each other once you've started to add a couple of different layers. For the eyebrows I add just the tiniest bit of dark brown into that red leather and I just start brush stroking away at the eyebrows. Essentially all I want to do is create not a solid brow like a cat I want to create the motion of hairs that are moving or sitting across the brow of this dwarf that probably is crazy and would maybe murder you but let's not talk about that 
For his lips, I needed to bring some life back in and I added reddish flesh with a touch of red into it just to give them a bit more life and I painted that solidly over the lips. I now need to work on the eyes and for the eyes I'm going to start out with a black base coat. This is going to be the main shape of the eye. This is quite an important step because you need to shape the eyes really well. While that dried I needed to then do something with my hands and the thing I decided to do with my hands was paint the teeth of the dwarf. I keep some of that skin tone that had been oversprayed in between each teeth, tooth, teeth? in between each tooth then it's time to shape the eyes and the actual eyeballs and this time i'm going to use an off-white and i'm going to paint that in to shape the eyeballs now that everything's drying i need to go back into the hair i can use a shade in this case i used carabao crimson which is a shade from citadel and i sprayed that into the kind of deeper recesses and mostly from the underside of the hair and the beard i then took that red leather and went back in again with the dry brush this is the first layering of dry brushing and i'm going to just kind of catch as many kind of raised areas as i can without going too much or too overboard with this level i'm then going to add slowly into that a little bit of the medium flesh that i used on the skin and i'm going to start working that only on the highest points or the highest highlights of the hair once i had done that i added a little bit of yellow into that mix and i did just the tips where the light would be hitting for his eyes, I'm told by the guy who commissioned this that his eyes are blue, so I'm just going to work off the general way that I do blue eyes, and I'm going to use deep blue as the base tone for that, and then I'm going to work that up to a crystal blue, and while that's drying, I'm going to go in and paint these little things, I don't even know what you call them, clips, clamps, whatever they are in his beard, he's got a couple of them that are clamping the hair, this is extremely uncomfortable as a person with a beard let me tell you i don't know how anybody does this and actually walks around feeling comfortable in their own body because it hurts it pulls it's not fun i don't like doing this with my own beard i painted them super solid with just a nice dark silver this is a color that i use from monument hobbies pro Recruit range it's a really great coverage paint it covers in one layer as long as you use it fairly thick and you don't overdo it with the water it will cover very very well once i got the base layers down on everything i needed to come back into those eyes and i'm going to add in a black pupil this is just going to go pretty much directly into the center of the irises that i had previously laid out and whilst this was drying, I added a tiny little bit of a light grey into the corners of the eyes. This is the wrong time to be doing this. If you're going to do this, do this before you add the iris and the pupils because trust me, it can get messy. I then touched up the teeth just a little bit because a bit of overspray got on them when I was doing the hair. I added non oil into the two clamps on his beard that have like a symbol on them and essentially this is just to create a little bit of depth in them and I used a much brighter silver to paint over those emblems that are on them. I then added his little hat and that's where I'm going to leave it before I continue in the next video with how I painted the rest of this magnificent dwarf. Thank you so much for watching my video. Hopefully you managed to pick up some tips that may help you painting your own models. Also, don't forget this video is part one of a two part series of videos in which I'm gonna paint this entire model and you will see how I painted it. By the way, if you've ever been on Facebook and you've tried to ask a couple of questions, perhaps some important questions about 3D printing or painting, and you've noticed you had some really stupid comments in return, then the best thing you can do in order to get your questions answered is to join the Patreon. The Patreon will give you access to our private Discord in which if I can't answer you, one of the other guys who are incredibly amazing artists in our group, one of them will be able to help you and I'm sure you'll be able to get the answers to your questions answered. And speaking of the Patreon, I have to thank the new patrons we got this week. Tonao! Michael Dresden, James Peverly, Tim Slater, Billy Mays, Sandy Eberling, Giovanni Morales, Jail Carl, Jeno Bandarenko. My dudes, thank you so much for your support. It is because of your support that I'm able to keep these lights blinding my eyeballs, 
even at 3 a.m. in the a.m. And of course, if you have joined the Patreon recently and you're not quite sure how to get into the Discord, it's pretty easy. Make sure that you have connected your Discord to your Patreon. Do this on a PC. Do not do this on a mobile. It just doesn't work. Once you've done that, as soon as you log into your Discord, it will automatically put our Discord group into your list of Discord groups and you can go in there and cause all the havoc you need to. And now I'm going to quickly cut this bit together and I'm going to make sure you have a video to watch and then I'm going to go to bed. So thank you for watching the video and of course make sure to like, subscribe, leave some comments and if you didn't like any of that there's not really much else I can say to you other than to please kindly at this point in the morning just f*** off. Because really, there is no other options. The next thing we know, it's going to be 4am in the AM. And nobody's got time for that.